It's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're taking a look at installing the Roadmaster base plate for flat towed vehicles on a 2022 Jeep Cherokee. Now, this is going to be available in two different styles. You're going to have your direct connect, which is going to go straight to your tow bar, or you can also have a crossbar style. Now, if you pick up that crossbar style, you're also going to need to pick up that crossbar. This is going to be separate, and that way you can attach it to your tow bar. Now this is what our base plate is going to look like when installed. Now this being a trail hawk, unfortunately you do lose those red tow hooks that kind of gives it that trail hawk look, but the great part is it actually utilizes the same spot so it really minimizes the amount of having to trim and overall it looks pretty clean. It allows you to get your arms attached when you are ready to tow by just simply twisting these in. It's going to snap in place and they're ready to go. Whenever you are ready to just drive around town not being flat towed, you just simply pull the pin, give it a twist, and this will come out, and then you're left with a pretty clean look overall. Nice thing too is your safety chain loop here is actually protruding just enough to be able to hook up and not make contact, but it's also not too unsightly, so it gives it a good look. As far as mounting up your six pole and your breakaway switch, it also comes with a bracket that works really well with the bumper beam. So once you drill that in, you're gonna get a pretty clean look here as well. So this is kind of tucked back, it's not protruding. So some of your other base plates out there can really look unsightly. This one keeps it looking pretty good overall once installed. Now this is what it's gonna look like when it's set up to be flat towed. And there's gonna be five components that you're gonna to need to accomplish that. First one on the vehicle side is going to be the base plate, and that's just going to attach to the secure mounting points of a frame or a bumper support on the vehicle, giving you a nice solid mounting point to be able to get your arms in place. And those are gonna to attach to our tow bar, which is gonna be our second component, and that's just gonna be the connection point between the towed vehicle and the RV, and that just attaches to the hitch. Next, you're gonna have your safety cables here. So just in case of an accidental disconnect, this attaches to the safety chain loops on the base plate and also on the hitch of the RV. So that way, if things fail, you still have a secondary safety. Now you also have diode wiring, which is gonna allow you to have turn signals, running lights and brake lights on the towed vehicle when you put them on in the RV. And it's gonna let the people behind you know what you're intending to do and keep you safe and legal. Now you also have a proportional braking system and this is going to send the brake signal or use a system to apply brake pressure on the towed vehicle and bring it to a stop. And going along with that is going to be your breakaway cable here and that way if a catastrophic accidental disconnect happens, it'll pull this pin, putting the brakes on the vehicle and that way it's not rolling down the highway. Now, as far as installation goes, this is actually one of the easier base plates. It's two separate sections that bolt in to where you have your factory horns, uh, not audible horns, but part of the bumper there. So it's using factory mounting points, um, which is really nice. You don't have to do any special drilling except for the bracket that's included. And you're just gonna drill through your bumper support. That way you can get a nice solid mount for your diode wiring and your breakaway switch. So speaking of that installation, let's take a look at that now. Now to begin our installation, we're gonna go ahead, open up the hood, and we're gonna be taking off our radiator shroud. And it's just attached with a series of plastic push pins. So you can see this one front and center, and I'll show you how to get those taken out. There's gonna be a small slot. So I use a trim panel tool here, and it just makes it easy to kind of separate that button. And then you should be able to get the whole plastic push pin by either pulling or using uh, a prying method. Now, if you don't have a trim panel tool, these are really handy, but you can also get away using a flathead screwdriver. Now, there's a total of 13 plastic push pins, so just kind of work your way around. You should be able to find them all. And this kind of just loops around these plugs here, and then the whole thing should come off. So we'll go ahead and set this aside. Now, there's gonna be two T30 Torx bit. You're gonna have one on each side here. Go ahead and get that removed, as well as the one on this side. And get our skid plate removed, and there's just gonna be seven 13 millimeter bolts holding it in. So you'll have these rear ones here that go straight through, and the front ones are slotted, so if you just loosen these up, you should be able to just kind of slide this out. So we'll go ahead and get these removed. Thank you. 
Now during the whole process, you're gonna to wanna to find a nice place to hold all your hardware. So that way when we remove it, we'll have it organized for when we put everything back on. Cause chances are, if you're doing your base plate, you're gonna be doing the rest of your flat toe. So having all those hardware ready to go for reinstallation is gonna be super helpful. There's going to be four 10 millimeter screws um, that are going in from the fascia into the radiator support. So we're gonna go ahead and get these removed. Now we're gonna to go to our fender liner here and where the fender liner meets our front fascia here, there's gonna be three eight millimeter screws. So we'll go ahead and get these removed. And some of these are tucked in there. So if it's kind of tricky to get back, um, what you can do is actually um, turn your key to the accessory and turn your wheel all the way um, to the left or right, depending on which wheel well. And that's gonna open up a nice space to be able to get to your hardware a little bit easier. Peel back our fender liner. There's a little slot here. And as you kind of peel this back, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter that's kind of tucked up in here. So we'll go ahead and get that removed as well. So now we're gonna head under and there's gonna be a plastic rivet that we're gonna drill out. This rivet is gonna be right here in front of the tire and we're just gonna put a drill bit right in the center here. A quarter inch should work pretty well. But once you kind of drill out the center, these normally pop off pretty easily, just like that. And that's gonna separate here. And not to worry, there is extra rivets that come in the kit. So when we put our fascia back up, we'll be able to get this back in. So now we're just gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same steps on the other side. Now we're getting ready to pull the fascia off. So you might wanna grab an extra set of hands as it kind of can be a little bit bulky and you don't wanna damage uh, or scratch your paint. And speaking of that, we're gonna just go ahead, put a little bit of painter's tape along the edges of where our fascia meets our fender here. And that's just gonna help not only when we take this off, but also when we put it back on. There's some clips here. Um, they are plastic, but they can kind of scuff the clear coat a little bit. So this will just give us a little bit more protection um, just by having this painter's tape here. So just kind of run this along that seam on both sides. And then we'll start to take our fascia off. We're gonna start on the outside edges first and kind of get these clips and work our way towards the middle. And something to consider too is before just pulling the fascia back, there's gonna be an electrical connector that we're gonna to have to separate. So just keep that in mind once you have this kind of popped off um, that we'll need to remove that. Now, as far as separating our fascia from the front fender, there is a tab that kind of goes straight up here. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of pry down and then pull back and that's gonna allow us to get these clips popped out. So I'll go ahead and just kind of put a little pressure here. You can see that tab there. And then once I start to pull back, we should hear those clips start to pop. Now this was a little bit tricky to get to pop off because it snaps in here and there's a little tab here that actually bites into it. So you also need to pull down this as it kind of is attached. Um, it locks into here. So a downward motion and then pulling out. Just be careful here on these plastic clips. But again, I had to put a little bit of force on ours to kind of get this to separate. Um, but you can see we have this side off. Now the rest of it just kind of goes along here and that's pretty easy to unsnap. But while we have this off, I'm gonna go ahead and separate our electrical connector. So just unclip the yellow locking tab here. This should slide out and that's gonna separate. So we'll go ahead and get the other side with our extra set of hands and then we can get our fascia set aside safely. See these little supports here? There's just gonna be three 15 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and get these removed. Now before this can just slide off, you're gonna see there's a, uh, just a plastic washer here that's on this stud. Um, you can use a flat head to kind of just pry this off or a trim panel tool, but it should just kind of slide over them. So if you have to, you can kind of just pull this off and it's gonna work its way off as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side get our tow hooks taken off as this is a Trailhawk model. And so what we're gonna do is just two 16s that are gonna be right here. Okay. 
Now there's also gonna be a large 30 millimeter nut that's on the back that holds this in. And you're probably wondering, how do I get that? Most people don't have a 30 millimeter, but if you use a set of channel locks, these really aren't that terribly tight. Um, so what we'll do is just kind of get our channel locks around the nut there. You can kind of access it from the side here. And since our tow hook is loose, we'll go ahead and just kind of um, push this back a little and that way we can kind of get some rotation and once we kind of spin this we should be able to get this nut to where we can take it off by hand and once you get just a little turn there it's just thread lock kind of holding that on so again it's not super tight but uh, it might take just a little bit of impact to kind of get this to start loosening up and then we'll just go ahead and get this removed and we'll be able to slide our tow hook out Now we can go ahead and repeat on the other side. We're gonna get the two bolts that are on the bottom side of the bumper beam, and that's gonna become a mounting point for our base plate. So with a 15 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and get these removed. So the bolts that come out are fairly short here, and when we put this up in place, we're also gonna be putting our little spacer tubes here. So this is gonna kind of align up and this area so you can use those studs to kind of get this all in place and then we're going to have our pipe spacers that go in between to kind of cinch up that gap now we're going to go ahead and use the bolts that are included in our kit and we're going to need to make sure that we put a split washer as well as a flat washer i'm also going to go ahead and get a little bit of loctite on there and that way once we have these tightened down that's going to create a nice seal on it and they're going to stay in place long term Feed this through not only our base plate, we'll put our pipe spacer on here, and then just kind of align this up, and I'm gonna get this started. Now there's gonna be plenty of other hardware uh, to hold this in place, so really what I'm gonna do is just kind of get this to where it's gonna hold it in. Now the Loctite's gonna start to dry up, so we wanna make sure to move kind of quickly here, but we don't have to rush too much, but there is gonna be other hardware that's gonna make sure that it's all aligned properly. So before we tighten that down, we wanna make sure that we still have that maneuverability by being just hand tight. So we'll go ahead and get the other side in. Make sure you again use that pipe spacer. And while those are holding in place, what I'm also going to do is grab our bolts that we took our tow hooks out with. Um, you can see these are gonna just align. We're only gonna be using one of them here, but we should be able to just slide this up, get this hand tightened in place. Now we're gonna take our bolt that we had our tow hooks attached with and just one of them, uh, you can see there's a hole here. The other one's not gonna be used, so you're gonna be left with two extra bolts at the end of the install. Um, I went ahead and put Loctite on here and we're gonna do that on the rest of the bolts going forward. Uh, that's just gonna, again, ensure that it's going to stay nice and tight and the bolts aren't gonna become loose over time. So that's gonna go there. And then we also have the three bolts that we took off from those bumper horns earlier. So we'll get those in place as well. And then we also have our long bolt here, and this is gonna feed towards the center. Um, now you might need to use a socket to kind of just align this to feed through, but you should be able to pass this through the hole in there. And once this goes through, on the back side, we have our large flat washer, a split washer, and a nut. So um, I'm gonna pass this through, then I can get some thread lock on there. And then we'll just go ahead and start tightening them down. We're gonna come back with a torque wrench as well once everything's snugged up. Um, but you can go ahead, get both of them set up on both sides of the vehicle with all the hardware in place for now. And when feeding the long bolt through, using a 19 millimeter socket and extension, I think that's gonna be our best bet to at least get it started through the hole. Um, another way you can feed it through before you get the uh, bracket up in place. Um, but if it falls through, you're gonna have to kind of fish it out with a, um, a set of needle nose. So just take your time, make sure you don't lose the bolt in there. Now getting this in with the socket and extension, you may kind of need to move this around. You should be able to see the threads kind of start to poke through, but we'll have that go all the way there. I'll then 
Go ahead and finish this up with, again, our large flat washer, our split washer, and then our nut. So now I'm going to go ahead and get everything tightened up and I'm just going to kind of uh, try to get this all cinched against it flat. So once I know that these are kind of tight, we can go ahead and get these ones and just kind of work this up to where it's resting flat against here as well as our pipe spacer. So um, just kind of get it snug down using hand tools. You don't want to use any impacts here because these weld nuts, if you do snap those welds, you're going to kind of be left without a solid mounting point. Now you are going to need an extension here to be able to tighten down the bolt that runs through the inside where the arms are going to go. Um, and on the back end, you're going to want to have a 19 millimeter wrench to be able to hold that nut in place as you tighten this down. So now I'm just going back with the torque wrench and I'm using the torque settings that are found in the instruction manual and just adjust accordingly to each different hardware. And this is just gonna make sure that it's not gonna be too tight on the threads, creating stress, but also that it's not gonna loosen up over time. And also with that Loctite, that should really help. So go through, make sure you get everything torqued down properly. Generally, this is gonna be the first part of a flat toe setup. So if you're doing a braking system or diode wiring, it's really beneficial to keep that fascia off as you're gonna be running wires through here. So it's gonna make it a lot easier. And that's what we're gonna be doing on this vehicle. So I'll come back a little bit later once we get all of our other components mounted up and I'll show you the rest of it and getting your fascia trimmed and back on. So as far as running our components, I've gone ahead and used the bracket that's included with the base plate and it works pretty well. Um, it is gonna be kind of tricky to drill through this. So just take your time, make sure you have some good drill bits because uh, this is pretty thick. But as far as mounting it up, this sits behind this lip and to get the measurements, they kind of recommend eight and three quarters away from the tow hook over to mark your hole. And I just drill the hole through here and use the included serrated nut and bolt. And that way we can get this mounted up. So this will, will give us the mounting point for not only our six pole, but also it's got a nice bracket here for our breakaway cable and it is slightly adjustable. So I put it on the furthest setting back just to kind of get maybe a little bit of help while mounting up the fascia. That way it's not in the way. But if we want to later, we can always move this a little bit forward if it needs to protrude from the fascia. We are going to have to trim a little bit on the front grill and that's going to allow not only our six pole but our breakaway switch to protrude through that. Now we do want to uh, kind of make sure that we don't have to cut off more than we need to and in the instruction manual they'll kind of lay out what you should trim but honestly I think the best way that I've found is to actually mark it or mock it up put the bumper kind of where it's going to sit and that way we can really determine uh, a nice clean cutout for these. <laughs> mock this up and then I just put my Torx bits up on the mounts just to kind of keep this portion nice and tight and we're going to see pretty quickly that where our interferences are going to be is kind of in this area. Now we need to make sure that we have enough space here for our plug so I'm going to go ahead and take a paint marker and just start marking out exactly where we need to trim. Now what I've found is with these grills being nice and kind of small webbing, uh, it's going to be easy to just take a pair of snips and just kind of trim along here. And that way we can have this all in place. We want to take the fascia back off and mock it up back again. We can just go ahead and cut along here. So just a pair of snips will do enough. And then we'll go back and kind of file this down. So we just want to make sure that we have clearance for the plug to sit on the mount and also open. So uh, I've gone ahead and just kind of used my paint marker to kind of make some rudimentary markings. So I'll get these all snipped out and then make sure it fits well. Kind of cut this out. You can see it kind of follows our breakaway cable here. And then our plug here is going to mount like this. Now the bumper is not completely secure. So what I did is to, I mounted a 10 millimeter that just bolts down here and that can kind of cinch the bottom up. That way we're getting an actual fit because you don't want to trim this. And then once it's cinched up, it'd be a little bit different, but this is going to sit like this. And you can see that the grill pretty well goes around this and keeps it nice and clean. So again, just take your time here. Um, you know, just make sure that you have some nice clean cuts. And then once you're done, you're going to want to go back with the file and just kind of knock off some of those sharper edges.
go ahead and get our fascia permanently put back on. So don't forget to get your electrical connections put back in place and just follow the steps in reverse basically to get your fascia put back on and all of the components. Now in putting your fascia back, you might have noticed where we drilled out those rivets previously. We're going to be using the ones that come in the kit. So you are going to need to pick up a rivet gun or borrow one. Generally, you can rent these from an auto parts store. And this is just going to be pretty easy. You're going to press it against here, pull tight, and then you're going to let that reseat and go one more time. And that should snap off, leaving our rivet holding this all together. So now I've gone ahead and buttoned everything up. Make sure you put your radiator cover support on there as well. But other than that, that's gonna do it for the installation of the Roadmaster base plate on a 2022 Jeep Cherokee.